Let the 5 a.m. book club begin. What? Mary. <laughs> Was that Alexa? No, that's Mary. That's something I'm writing similar to, to Alexa. I mean, obviously, it's not nowhere near the scope, but I, I really do believe Gary V is definitely right as far as voice being the future. So I'm kind of taking a crack at a my own little <laughs> outer room. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> wow. Killer Martek, you take things to a whole new level. You quit calling me that one. <laughs> 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 okay, that was a threat. Okay. All right. The first thing that really hit, I mean, we said this yesterday, so I, and we are on chapter two. That's where we are. Um, it's really hard to design products by focus groups. A lot of times people don't know what they want until you show it to them. We had said that yesterday, but how often, and, and before I really get into this, how often has this time and time again been kind of proven true? You know, Sean, um, how many people here are, are guilty of not even knowing where they want to go to eat? Exactly. And yeah, he hits on that. And I, I, I'm going to, there's like this iconic joke, I think, that every man knows to ask his wife, where do you want to eat? I don't know. What do you want? Okay. That's like, that. yeah, you, you know yep. exactly what I'm talking about. I was like, we'll, we'll just pretend I'm not here and then let's go to that place. <laughs> What'd you say, y'all? I said, I'm the abnormal one. I always know where I want to go. Right. You guys, you guys are like, you guys are like Wonder Women, though. <laughs> yes, he is. Um, Carol and Dana, you guys know where you want to go in Veronica? Yes. You mean in a restaurant? Yeah, like if, if, if you're at home and someone asks, what do you want to go to eat? Oh, you don't, yeah. you don't You don't come up with the question, where do you want to go eat? No, I, I have like three places and then they pick which one of those three. Right. Oh, you let them pick. Yeah, I'll pick three places. I'll say this, this, or this. What do you think? Ah. What about you, Dana? Yeah, in the same way. The either uh. or options. Yeah. It works really well. I don't know who came up with that theory, but you know when, you know when your kids were little and they said, always give your kids two options? You know, you, you want to put your coat on or you want mom to put your coat on for you? You remember that? <laughs> <laughs> that was like the only two options? Yeah, and, I agree and with that. I've totally sworn by that that rule. Like, you want to go to Mexican food, or you want to go to Italian. That's it. Because when you when you have infinite when you have infinite choices, it literally locks your brain up. Yeah, mm. agreeing. It literally. I mean, I think uh, you said you know Costco. Costco is like really believe it or not, marketing and sales wise, Costco with Walmart is probably one of the. They have incredibly tremendous science that goes behind how they display and how they put their what type of products that they have. Really? They noticed know. that their ketchup sales was down for three years, and they had fifty three different types of uh, you know d d gourmet ketchups and stuff like that. They limited it to wow. four choices, and their their ketchup sales like skyrocketed three hundred percent that year. Of course! Oh my gosh, I love that. That makes sense. Even at the Mall of America or a big shopping center, Chicago, any place like that, I don't buy anything. There's too many places to choose from. Well, that's yeah, that's why I freak out. I freak out like I have uh, I have the iTunes where you can just go download any music that you want. If I Shazam it, you know, you click it, you hit it, you send it to the iTunes category. And when you get to the unlimited, I'm like, oh my god, I, my brain locks up. What what, what am I going to download? Exactly. <laughs> but uh, okay, so let's go here. Pay up. In other words, it's a way of discovering what your customers want to wants to buy by guiding them through a series of somewhat counterintuitive questions and customizing a solution for them so they are more likely to purchase for you. And it's mm -hmm. a way to do that that is completely automated and does not require one-to-one -one conversations with every single customer. Now, one thing I really want to stress on this is where a lot of people fail in automation from my personal experience. There is that, there's still that one-to-one -one feel. Mm -hmm. That should be come across in your copy and your creative. Oh. If that makes sense. So when the person, even though it is automated, when the person is interacting with it, yeah. they, they, they still had that like sitting across the, I, I call it the Tupperware salesman. Type <clears throat> of film. So the questions are supposed to be guided to a way where they, like you, you almost know what they're, they're thinking and something like that. Well, they tell you exactly. They yeah. tell you. And kind of what you hit on, 
it, it, it and actually what Dana hit on it, and I think it gets actually into more of the chapter, so I don't want to touch too much on it. But we actually, you ask them, people are more prone to to tell you what they did in the past and what they don't want to do, opposed to what the you know the infinite choices of what they do want to do. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like the kind of like the choices that she had said. So the payoff is huge in three ways. One, you get back priceless information to help you know what they want to buy and when they're ready to buy it. They'll be a happy customer who'll come back to time and time again. You'll find out why they didn't buy, providing opportunities to revise your campaign, fix your product, promotion, re-engage them. So they'll eventually become that happy customer who returns to buy time and time again. And that number two is such a huge thing because a lot of people do not spend time. They're, they're so in, when, in this type of marketing or just, I think, in life in general in period, there's a lot more to be learned by your failures than there is your victories. Mm -hmm. Very true. And what's optimized, it gives you the ability to scale your business significantly, limited by one only by the size of the market in which you operate. So what that that really goes back to that buyer persona, customer avatar, perfect customer. Once you yep. get that hammered out, you can really just kind of go after everybody's got that target on their back. Mm -hmm. So simple on the surface, but like most things in life, the devil is in the details. I'll go into the massive detail that asked for me later on in the methodology, methodology section, but in plain English, the way to apply the ask formula online is by using a unique combination of surveys in a very specific sequence and acting on the data in a very specific way. All right. The key to it is a very specific sequence and acting on that data in a very specific way. What would that guys, so what, what does that mean to you just kind of right now? Morning, Chuck. Morning. Say that, would you ask the question again, Sean? Well, it's not so much a question, it's more of a state, statement. He said by using a combination of unique surveys in a very specific sequence in a very specific way. Yeah, I was on the phone last night with somebody. You, you have, you're breaking up, Yolanda. Was that said again, Yolanda? You were breaking up earlier. I said you have to really know physically. What you really want what results you're looking for, what outcome you want. Yeah. One thing that uh, really stuck with me through training uh, with Ryan Dice, or his camp anyway, and I think Abdul, that you're, that's actually how we met, was mm -hmm. in DM, is time and time again, he said, no matter the product, because we all have different types of products in different industries, he said people really, they kind of go through the process of getting all the steps put in place, getting all the tools put in place. They have a great product. They really have a great message, but their, their campaigns still fail. And he said at nine out of ten times, the reason why the, all these things fail is people get the sequencing of their messages wrong. Really? This is really like a, that's really a huge point that across the board, if you're, you know, putting in product or anything online, is the sequencing, sequencing of the messages. Mm-hmm. And that, that just goes back to where, you know, are the, it kind of identifies, are the people where the, like the three questions that you showed, that was a great example that you showed yesterday too, Abdul, of mm -hmm. uh, really kind of lay it out. So are you ready to buy a home? Are you just shopping? You know, so I mean, because that right there shows you, and that's why this is so huge because it kind of, it, 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 it takes all the gray area out of where they are exactly so you can apply that directly because it's not just so much guesswork on where they are in the sequence. Mm -hmm. You know, um, yep. Sean, last night I had a, a phone call from somebody who was interested in my class, and I don't know her. She was recommended by somebody, but I, I did, I used those questions, Abdul, or I tried to, I, did, I don't think I had them probably in the right order, but I did questions with her on the phone, but it was so time-consuming. I was on the mm -hmm. phone, I met with her for 45 minutes, I really got to know what she wanted, what she needed, and I think we're going to work something out. But I, when you said that just a few minutes ago that it's all automated, which is better, mm -hmm. sleeker, I mean, I really felt that firsthand last night. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, even with the emails, so like if it's, um, let's say they checked on his, on his example, they checked the beginner, like they just started business. There's a series of emails that the business, the person who just started a business would relate to. 
right. versus a um, an expert. Right, yeah. and they might even, and, and a lot of that could be just really the language that's in the email. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, if I'm trying to learn about real estate and I don't know anything, you're going to have to use very generic, very layman's term, you know, uh, uh, language, and that opposed to where if I've been immersed in that world for some time, I know what. Give Chuck, give me some, give me some, uh, some, some quick buzz real estate buzzwords. You're on mute, sir. You're on mute, sir. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, buzzwords. Uh, just got up. Uh, I don't know. You know, it's uh, like acronyms, like FISBO. And, yeah, stuff like that. You know, I would have no clue what that is. So, I mean, that that, that right there would definitely help you as far as uh, with your CAP rates and stuff like that, you know. Yeah, exactly. The beginner wouldn't know. You're saying that right, Sean? Right, right. Yeah. I mean, so the ask formula, the ask formula, and I just I, my tongue is tied this morning, is a series of surveys or questions designed to determine what a customer wants, along with customized sales language based on those answers to get the customer to buy. Think of it like a funnel. A funnel is a tube or pipe that is wide at the top and narrow at the bottom. And we've been talking about funnels for some time, haven't we? Yep. Used for guiding liquid or powder into a small opening. A survey or a question funnel operates in the same way. You start by asking big, wide questions at first, and then those questions narrow and narrow more as you ask the customer simple, more precise questions about their situation until you have enough information to speak to their specific wants, needs, and desires. Wow. Yep. After intense testing and refining, I've come up with four basic survey types that compromise the ask formula, which we will be covering in detail in the second half of the book. These are the core surveys that can be used for any online business with proven and usually dramatic results. They help you do four things. Define your market, engage your market, refine your marketing, and redeem your marketing efforts. So basically, it just helps you identify, helps you interact with them helps you improve that market by knowing which data point or what points that you're going after and helps you redeem your marketing efforts, which means it helps you determine a return of investment. Okay, over the past eight years, I've devoted practically my entire professional life uh, to this. During that time, I've met a number of people who said they've tried using surveys and haven't found them all at all helpful. They just weren't making any money. After probing a bit, I'm not surprised to find they are asking the wrong questions the wrong way and they're looking at the wrong data. Again, the devil is in the details. So this is, again, we still have this tendency to put our what we're after into these questions, if you will. So it's yep. really no different than when we're just saying, hey, I want you to buy this. It's a, it needs to be it, it, the dev, how much I don't think I'm being articulate enough on this. We still need to ask questions that are going to be with the other person in mind, not so much ourselves in mind, the benefit that we're after more so the benefit that they are. Yeah. So, so, um, Sean, just to put this in real, real time here, um, for a beginning person that's buying real estate. So, and I can ask, Everyone, here, what would the first question be for somebody who is um, maybe just starting the process of buying their first home? Well, that could depend what type of because of, of, you you we, you would have a couple of different types of avatars. You'd have someone that's never bought a home before. You'd have someone that's never bought a home, but and that might be due to have they never bought a home before because of their age. Have they never bought a home before due to a credit situation? Yep. Um, you have a different avatar of someone who may be selling their house. Mm -hmm. You have different avatar, though, and it's you have in sub ones in there. You have someone who's never possibly sold their house before, or you have someone that needs to sell their house quickly. So I mean, there's different sub ones in there. That's true. Mm -hmm. Because there's one guy I signed up for his email list, and uh, he he does ads and stuff like that, but. I keep getting these emails about how to get your Facebook um, as, as Facebook, Facebook shut your account down, how to get your Facebook account back up. And I'm like, he's not talking to me. I, my Facebook account 
It's yeah, not no, shut. Right. I'm like, I'm, I'm right. You're interacting with him. Yeah. Yeah. He's not segmenting his, uh, his list very well. Mm -hmm. He's kind of spraying and praying. And that's, that's the only difference. All these things that we're looking at, it's, it's the same traditional marketing that, I mean, that's been around for forever, but it's yeah. just traditionally like through years, you had to spray and pray and try to hit what you could. And now you're basically sending a ballistic missile to, you know, an inch. Exactly. It's precision. That's what it is. That's mm -hmm. what it is. So I hate to say it, but when it comes to using surveys in ways that actually make money, most businesses just don't have a clue, even the biggest businesses. The kind of companies you'd never expect to struggle with anything seem to get surveys wrong. It isn't their fault when it comes to asking questions, whether they're a big corporation or a one-person boutique. Business mm -hmm. owners are prone to making the same costly mistake. They try just to ask customers what they want. What would you like to purchase on this site? What kind of product do you want? How can you help? How can we help you? Sound familiar? Instinctively, we all ask people what they want. We think if we just ask them, they'll tell us we can sit back and watch the dollars pour in. If only it were that was simple. There's a famous quote that has been attributed to Henry Ford. If I had asked people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. That's true. I love that. I thought that yeah. was great. I think that's, I mean, it's just really <laughs> profound because People really don't know what they want. They know they might have a problem, yep. and that they, they, they want an answer to it. But outside of that, they they generally they, they probably don't know exactly what they want. And then on top of that, you don't know what you don't know. Well, it, it was always it always struck me when they, when Steve Jobs said he doesn't get how does he he doesn't um, make products for people. He makes products. I I, I don't want to say for himself because I think he said he didn't, he goes on to say that about that Steve Jobs says that people really don't know what they want. Yeah. Would you guys agree to that as a whole? I mean, yes. we kind of think we, yeah. kind of think we do, but we, I mean. Mm -hmm. Definitely yeah. real estate. Yeah. They don't know with specificity. They might know generally something they're missing or they think they want, but I think the specifics of it, they don't know. I agree. Like maybe they know the feeling that they want, or maybe they know, you know, a little piece of the outcome that they want, like mm -hmm. security you know, or something like that, but they don't really know, you know, how to get there or what, no. you know, product or what house or whatever is going to get them there. Well, and look, at, look at us with even like the five second rule and Mel said it over and over in that book that we, we know we've got issues and we want to solve our problems, but we don't know how to change. And that's mm. what the five second rule was a tool. This helps you do what you yep. want to do. And I think that's what we offer our customers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's also you got to realize too. You're you're actually when and just what you described right there, Terrell, is a very small percentage of the population that is even willing to change yeah. outside of a of a point in which they have to. Good yeah. point. Because most people just absolutely will not change unless necessity comes around to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even the author, and we're not into chapter four yet, but what happened to him and why he had to change. Over and over again, we see people that get absolutely desperate. They are in almost in hell before they decide, I have to do something. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> and I, I'm, I've been very guilty of that. <laughs> That's true. That's so true, Gerald. <clears throat> because here's the big secret. People don't know what they want, really. In fact, to illustrate this point, think about the last time you and a group of friends were hanging out yeah, wow. Okay. And hanging out, think about where they want to go out to eat. You're all sitting around. And someone says, Hey, anybody hungry? What do you feel like doing for dinner? What's the most common response? I don't know. What do you want? Exactly. They throw that that scenario, I, 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 I watched Jungle Book. I, I've been, you know, Bub, I've been letting him watch Disney movies, even though he's a little bit younger. But I got, I got the entire Disney collection where I, I downloaded it. <laughs> anyway, but I don't know if you remember Jungle Book, the original one. There's a scene that had the Beatles in it that were vultures, the actual the group, the, the band, the Beatles. Mm -hmm. like, what do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? Um, that's, that, that's me crazy. I will YouTube that for you, Veronica, and I'll send it to you. <laughs> mm, that's, that's cool. But that's true. That's, that's just how normal people are. Yeah. 
why is that? Maybe because there is certain like disconnections because we're trying to do things, uh, you know, me, so, some, sometimes we are slightly disconnected with ourselves when, you know, we, we're doing things to what others think, you know, and, and I, I think at some point you start to disconnect when you think about everybody else but what you really want. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. It's, it's for, me, it, for me, it's a bad question because if anybody ever asked me, said, they said, oh, I do what you want to eat. And I would say probably, I don't know, Somali food. And then everybody would look around me, look at me like I have five heads, like, <laughs> <laughs> freaking want no Somali food. I you could say butter chicken. Yeah, or anything. But usually I, I have to throw it back because usually people are like, they want something totally different than what I would want. And whatever I would pick, they would, be, they would look at me like, that's not, yeah, that's not even an option. You know, I don't want to get too far off topic, but what you just said is the hardest part about having – to try to convert to a vegan lifestyle. Yeah. Mm. It's because people just look at you crazy. Dana, Dana, you live with that because you're way more into it than I am. And she does. She does. She practices it. And it, it, and so she said, I don't want to be the person. Well, you tell them, Dana, but oh, you don't want to be the person who says, no, I can't do, can't do, <laughs> can't do this, can't do. Uh, ah, yeah. that's always, yeah. Yeah, but, I mean, people do um, – I, I don't even like telling people that I'm vegan because they try to convince, they feel like it's their job to try to convince you exactly. out of it. Exactly. Oh my God. I had it done. I had it done. And it's like, really? Why don't you, you tell had to me do I'm what? not going to get enough protein. You're not going to get yeah. enough protein. I'm like, he's like, it's just never, I was like, dude, I'm, it's twice the size of you. I'm twice the size yeah. of you and I'm not dead yet. Yeah, but, but, you know, anything. but you know something what kills me with that? As if you haven't done the research to find out what you have to do to have the right. protein. Well, I, I have right. never in any, I, I mean, I've tried different things. I have never in anything endeavor that I've ever tried that people <laughs> so naturally just try to just rebel against it. Like she said, they just feel like uh, they have this mission to try to convert you, bring you back to the light when you tell someone that. And I'm not even a full-blown vegan. You know what I mean? I, I, I have actually have cheat. I love tacos. I'm not giving up tacos. I try tacos mm -hmm. on Sunday. You know what I mean? So it's a uh, – what are you laughing at? <laughs> I don't agree. I, I won't. Get, I won't give up sushi. <laughs> right. So See, that's thing. upset. Yeah. I just. I'm trying to do it for a healthier lifestyle. You know what I mean. So I try to eat really kind of plant based more more often than not. But it's not like a lot of people get into it. Like the whole meat is murder and stuff like that. And I'm. I'm not saying it's not. But I'm not going to get it all into that. But that's not yeah. why I do it. But people like you. The moment you tell them, she she's absolute. They just try to convince you. But uh, okay. So I, I just. Yeah, I'm not it. trying to, to, you know, convince anybody. I just indulge in it. So you can be vegan. <laughs> what did you say, Um, Dana, Sean, I was getting ready to say De La Marte. Haha. <laughs> Sean and everybody else going vegan. Let me just set you guys free from other people and their BS. The reason people go to meat for protein is because the, the cows and the chickens and everybody else get their protein from the grass. Right. Hella. Protein okay. is actually coming from veggies then and from the grass and from the leaves that they eat and not from something in their body. Yeah, I had, I've, I've had no problem. I mean, I'm a pretty big guy. I've had no problems on any type of protein deficiency since I went more plant-based. Yeah. Oh, it's Absolutely. a protein that's already been eaten. Yeah. <laughs> what was that, Dana? Oh, I was just going to say, I, I am the same way. I've lost zero, zero muscle mass, if not anything. I mean, I'm, of course, I'm yeah. sure I've gained it, you know? Yeah. That's a anyway. dangerous topic. But besides food, I know we're talking about this. Don't you think that, and we've had this discussion before, don't you think that people do that anyway yep. in all areas of life where they try to talk you out of doing things? Yeah. I mean, but I've just yeah. never it, honestly seen such a, a, a feverish passion to do so like yeah. I have with the only time I've ever seen that is really said that to get that heated is really is religion. Mm. I mean, it's like, it, she's right. It's, in, it's insane the way people just, they react to it. It's just like you're, you got five heads. It's like you said earlier. Yeah, you name it. It's like, like, and I, I don't want to have a mortgage. People try and talk you out of that. 
Yep. Yeah, we don't have a mortgage, so people try and tell us how stupid we are. We're missing all the tax benefits. Yeah, and this, of being in debt. No, <laughs> right. uh, we're now debt free on that, or being debt free. You know, mm -hmm. or they talk about good. What is it called? Good debt. Oh well, you know, there's there's good debt and there's bad debt. And we don't mm -hmm. believe in any good debt. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's good debt. You know, it's yeah, what is good you know, debt? I want to if, know. If you can sit down with a pen and paper and show me. I'd be. I'd love to see it. Right. We, we you, then they shut up. We follow Dave Ramsey, and we're not going to follow anyone else on that. So we, that's just that. our entire. It goes. I mean, that's really the same thing, though. It's a, mm -hmm. it's it's a belief a belief structure on on a, on a level as a society, mm -hmm. and we we we're, we're a debt driven society. There's. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no doubt about that. Yeah. And where we started from was about change. You know, it's like people don't want to change, and they really don't want us to change. So whether it's debt or right or our diet or whatever, well, you, have like a I unique think, perspective. Uh, I just want to say, like, oh, if you have like a unique perspective, like not having a mortgage on your home. I don't have a very big credit history at all. I actually got a, a credit card now, so I just build just in case if I need to use it for something. You know, I don't really do very much with it, but I I do buy and pay off. So I just in case so I have a backup because you know sometimes maybe you know maybe I would like to to buy some something big and sometimes I don't know. I probably won't because but what I want to say is I told to the agent to the bank person that I don't have any credit history, history because I thought you buy things when you have money for them. And he's, he looked at me like I had antennas in my head. <laughs> like that I'm from the space and, um, and, you know, and she's, you know, she was telling how great it is, but I knew that I'll never buy into this. I don't, I will never get something. It's just a backup plan. Like if everything mm -hmm. crashes and I, and I need to ask somebody, but uh, I've never planned for it, and it it's so painful because people look at you like you are this, like if you don't have TV, they, like some people in my town look at me, she doesn't even have TV, like, like, like <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't even have TV. <laughs> See, that's the reason why, I, and I, I, this is the reason why I don't talk to most people. Because I feel like I'm an alien living in the abnormal world. And when I try to explain what I think, what I think, not what they think, what I think, it's like they, they're looking at me like I have four heads. And I'm just like, okay. You lost a head. What happened when you had five last time? <laughs> yeah. Misery loves company. Yes, it does. Yeah. Yes, it does. Yeah. And Which is I, why getting back to the book <laughs> – People don't know what they want because I think they're inundated with, like we were, you know, we, we stayed in the hotel, we stayed in the uh, Marriott over um, the weekend on Sunday, uh, so we watched TV, we went up to the concierge lounge and they had a beautiful TV, every other ad was about pharmaceutical commercials and I was shocked about how many pharmaceutical commercials there are on TV for mm. rheumatoid arthritis, for uh, <laughs> erectile dysfunction. Yeah, or, so they're like, well, I don't know, or, maybe, maybe I'm not peeing right. Like every know. disease you can imagine, <laughs> and then they're telling you, you know, what you know, what can happen to you if you take the pill. Oh, yeah, did it. Do, do you have a hard time urinating? Side effects <laughs> might be dizziness and vertigo, uh, seizures. I mean, I it, there and saying to myself, Suddenly, why did this happen where all of this happened on TV that I didn't see it? And I just think it's really, really a shame that I don't have TV pad. What people, don't, do? people may not even know what they want, but it's being forced down their throats. Oh, yeah. They see it on TV, <clears throat> then they go to their doctor, and the doctor had a pharmaceutical rep come in their office with all this free food. Mm -hmm. And wine and then dine in them, and they get free meds coming in the door. Oh uh, yeah, I, and, I, and they get the free meds coming in the door, and they're prompting them to to, to promote those meds. And so you, you're walking out the door with a handful of pills. So when you're walking out the door with 15 prescriptions. Yeah, and yeah. I actually left one of my doctors because everything, every answer he had was a pill. Every single answer he had was a pill. Yeah. Driven society right now, mm -hmm. 
and it's yeah. just terrible. And I, <coughs> I wrote it on my Facebook page. I was like, I cannot believe all of these pharmaceutical ads that are on TV right now. I would yeah. just, it's interesting. It's a big we, industry. We met this um, couple. He was 69 and she was 70. They don't take any meds at all. They take mm -hmm. essential oils. And she had, um, he had high blood pressure and she had something else. But they don't take any meds anymore. They got themselves wow. off of it. And they looked in great shape. Mm -hmm. I bet. This other lady, she was the same age as Chuck's mom. She's 81. She takes nothing. She's, she's, she was in like hiking boots. She's on her feet. She's like. <laughs> she was in the hiking boots. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. She was at the campground. She was at the, she was at the campground. She was in hiking boots and she looked great. And she had her wits about her and she still lives by herself. She owns a shopping center. She owns a, <laughs> a shopping center. Not only that, she owns a lot of property. She was, she's been a realtor for 50 years. Wow. wow. And she owns a shopping center that has a Kmart and some other stores. She's, she's got a lot of money. And she's, she was fabulous. Yeah. Mm. She's 81. And I, I looked at him and I said, she's the same age as your mom. Look at this. This is incredible. Wow. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Normal people, people are them. out. Guys, be careful. People uh, yeah, that's about. the real disease. The real disease is being normal. People don't know what they want, though. It's true, um, Sean. People really don't know what they want. It's like, I'm sure Dana can attest to this when people come in and they say, you know, what they kind of want in a house, and then you start taking them around and they end up with something entirely something different. Something totally different. Yeah, yeah or like right. with Apple, you know, with Apple, what if the, you know, the Apple company would go around people and just ask everybody, ask this, they create something amazing and that's what they do. So we are after them, not they are after us. They, they come up here, like they, they, they made this amazing thing and they get it out there rather than asking us you know what like what do you want and beans is like vanilla so they have no because if they ask everybody i mean how do you choose so they stand for something and they go for it so well, I that, like, <clears throat> what's that i like what steve jobs said he says people often don't know what will make their life better until they've seen it Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I, I wanted to yeah. clarify that too because I think I feel like we don't want to be saying and I don't think we are saying that we're saying that that we help them find the thing that they need and want but we're not saying that they're they're stupid they're ignorant they don't no. understand it's not that it's like that myriad of choices that paralyzes people mm -hmm. from decisions of <clears throat> all experience well, some of our customers are amazing they are people well, are amazing even if they don't want to change they can we can, yeah, anyway. Steve Jobs, <clears throat> actually, when he, I think when he came back to Apple or something like that, but anyways, he had cut down, I think he had like close to 100 products, and he brought it all the way down to 26 products. Yeah. And when he did that, that totally transformed the company. <laughs> and the reason why, just to kind of jump back into the book, is that the reason why is people, People essentially are only good at answering two basic types of questions when they don't know what they want, what is they what it is they don't want, and what they've done in the past. This is true both online and offline, by the way. Vague general asking is one of the biggest mistakes people make when trying to find out what people want. It's because people just don't know how to answer. That's mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Steve Jobs was right. People often don't know what will make their life better until they've seen it. So then the question is, what's the solution? Well, if we go back to Henry Ford's quotation, instead of asking people what they wanted, what if Ford had asked, what is it that you don't like about horses? Mm -hmm. Chances are he would have gotten back all sorts of useful information. People may have said things like, I don't like the fact that my horse is slow or it needs to be fed or it bites me. I had, I had a problem with the horse biting me when I was younger. Um, I, I hit it and it kicked me. <laughs> I love that you horse. You were competing with her. It was, it was a him. Oh, him. I love that horse. He was a good horse. Horses are incredibly intelligent and just mm -hmm. awesome creatures. They really are. Mm -hmm. I don't like the fact that only one person can ride it on my horse at a time. The point is that there are certain things about horses that people don't like, but they didn't yeah. know the solution was something outside of what they can imagine. 
that's mm -hmm. actually where the exciting part comes in. As entrepreneurs and marketers, we go to identify and provide that solution, but to create and sell something that people will actually buy, what you need is the raw material to extract from the market to determine what the solution is, even when your customers can't quite articulate it. That's why to get the type of results in market after market like you are about to see, it requires using surveys in a somewhat different, unexpected way because the right way to use surveys is counter intuitive mm -hmm. wow in a mm -hmm. certain type of way mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you guys feel and I, obviously there's a definition but what do you guys feel because i actually googled the definition um oftentimes i mean i know you know you know the word but i really want to get back in depth to what something is what does he think you you think he means by the word counterintuitive it's against your best instinct mm -hmm. yeah it's it's it's, it's against the, the flow the the norm mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Mm -hmm. I feel that maybe it's like for me the best way to understand this is imagine that you know you have your personality. Let's say you want to have a show, or you want to have a blog, or you want to have a YouTube channel. Do you go around and ask, you know, should I be loud? Should I be quiet? Should I joke? Should I be this? And you you go and ask other people how they want to see you, or you actually bring your personality, and based on that, you build your crowd. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's like the, the best way for me to kind of understand because it is counterintuitive. We just were learning that we need to ask what our customers want. Mm -hmm. so we That's what my daughter does on her makeup page for YouTube. When she mm -hmm. did, does a look, she say, tell me what you guys want to see. What other kind of looks do you guys want to see next? What mm -hmm. do you want to yeah. learn about? How to, how to moisturize? How to, she does it for her hair because she has hair products also. She mm -hmm. does it for her hair. What's the biggest problems you have you guys have being natural what do you want to hear hear from hear about from me mm -hmm. and you know um it's and funny it because she has content for the rest of the year already wow yeah. well <clears throat> pat flynn who i actually saw was one of the customers of uh, the whole s formula um mm -hmm. i remember when he used to ask in his facebook page what is one of your biggest problems and and basically whatever people would answer that's the course that he would make those kind of things so he wouldn't guess what they wanted he just he asked them. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. <clears throat> their biggest problem so it, no matter what it was what area or what venue they would he would offer a course to help them with it yeah well based on the answers and then it's just like you make your course that and then they're like, man, I feel like he's speaking directly to me or whatever. I, you know, I do something very similar when I when we create content by asking Google. We ask like we have a subject like that, yeah. and we ask we put how to so like the, the how to clean my fur, and mm -hmm. then Google will give you suggestions underneath what you're typing if you've ever noticed that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that those are the highest trending obviously mm -hmm. questions that's been asked about the subject. So that's kind of a way to use the data points as well. But yeah, that's I, I completely agree with what you guys are saying. So it sounds kind of contradictory. We we just saying right now that we need to do our own thing, and yet we saying we need to ask our, our our customers. And I think it's both because we want to show up as like authentic <clears throat> creator of something, but yet we building communication with our crowd. So it doesn't it it actually makes sense. Also, it sounds a little bit contradictory strategy. Right. Well, to even go deeper with it, um, Veronica, some people say, how do you come up with content for like a YouTube channel or for uh -huh. a blog or whatever? And that's why it's, it, it may sound a little painful, but that's why that avatar uh -huh. is so important. Because if you have your avatars literally sitting on a desk by description and uh, like a graphical uh, presentation, you just look at the paper and say, what do you want to hear? And that's why you name them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, 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 the same reason why you name your avatar is the same psychology of why in hostage situations, they always refer to the hostage as a, with a name. It's because mm. it attach uh, a personal persona to, 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 the, to, the, to the object. Yes. And they're kind of looking at it. Uh, do That's I true. Uh, so, so something I learned about this is, uh, strangely, I come from a corporate and academic background in neuroscience from Brown University, mm -hmm. and okay. I speak near fluent Chinese. That story's to come, and although I thought the corporate world would be for me, 
I had this deep longing to be an entrepreneur. Even as a kid, I created business starting when I was 13. Yep. In my mid-20s, once I became a full-time entrepreneur, the no-turning-back kind, I set out to make my mark. <clears throat> so after failing in more than a few early attempts online, marketing were a after failing in more than a few early attempts in the online marketing world out of sheer frustration, I finally decided to ask people what they needed help with and why they didn't buy. Their answers surprised me, but they told me what I needed to hear. One mm -hmm. of the biggest things I discovered was that I had been taking a one-size-fits-all approach to my marketing. Their responses told me I needed to speak to different segments of the market quite differently. Quite frankly, I asked out of necessity because I was desperate and didn't know how to succeed otherwise. Yep. There's that really that change that comes from, but uh, I, but the best result of the desperation attempt of my asking questions of the market became the foundation for the formula that I personally use to successfully enter and dominate 23 different markets and counting that my customers wow. and clients have used in hundreds of different markets and that when strategically and appropriately applied can revolutionize practically any business, including yours. Because after testing and testing and testing my own businesses that I have realized I had stumbled on a particular approach that anyone could replicate if they were simply armed with the right information. The ask formula I discovered was a stunningly simple secret to spectacular sales was all about asking the right questions in the right way at the right time. Mm -hmm. And as I said, the discovery of how to ask the right question make <clears throat> questions make money in the process and have satisfied customers coming back for more in an area that's more nuanced and misunderstood than it might initially seem. But after years of testing, sifting, and reviewing what works and what does, doesn't, I now have a proven formula that has worked in multiple businesses and made markets responsive that were previously considered dead. The reason mm -hmm. why I'm telling go ahead. No, finish, finish your thought. I want you to the reason why I'm telling you all this because I want to give you the confidence that the formula you're about to discover has been tested, battle tested, stress tested, market mm -hmm. after market. It has been used by company, companies both large and small, so you can have confidence that this is something you can apply in your business. Are you skeptical? Great. I consider myself a chief among skeptics. So, so before I explain all the details and methodology of the ASK formula, I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself and the unlikely story of how the ASK formula came together to create what's becoming a movement online with a financial impact beyond my wildest imagination. And as I, as I take you along my journey with its winding paths and pitfalls, even where I failed and nearly lost it all, I think you'll come to understand better what the ask formula is and why it's so useful and dramatic impact in making in your business. And that'd be what he's getting ready to do, the way he structured this book with the storytelling first and then the method after, I mm -hmm. think is a huge part of why this book was so successful. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, the fact that he has 23 different niches. Mm -hmm. and you, 27. <clears throat> 20, oh, okay, 27. He's not, he cannot be an expert in all those niches. Oh, he's not. The, he's, that's right. That's what, that's what I'm saying. He's also not passionate about any of them either. It's just no, it's emotionless. And again, that keeps ringing out loud to me personally that you can't be tied up in your emotions when you're having a business. <clears throat> Most people say, oh, this is my baby. This is my, what I'm going to do, blah, blah, blah. I'm passionate and I love this. That has nothing to do with business and making money. Emotions can blind you. That totally. cat looks gigantic. His head is big. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, kitty. You're, you're on mute, Tara. Aw, he's so cute. Ah, he's obese. Look at him. <laughs> oh, my God, it's a big kitty. Wow. <laughs> he's big. No he's wonder you have big bills, oh. too. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know what he's doing. He, looking like he wants to be up here, but then he gets up here, and I don't know what he's doing. So and, cats don't know what they want either. Yep. No. <laughs> he doesn't know what he wants. Good one. And, and like a perfect example, also, is, and I brought this up before, is about Pat Flynn's food truck site never never had a food truck business but yet he's giving advice to people on how to have a successful food truck up well, that's just amazing to me why you is that? Said that yesterday and i went and downloaded it i was like i'm going to get this right here what what was it yolanda that you downloaded the um he has a pdf when you sign up and go through his whole funnel thing yep. that you oh. download um for how to have a food truck one of the things I want to do is how to have a successful um, mobile coffee service. And so mm -hmm. that made sense and lined up with 
you know, what I wanted to do. So I was like, oh my God, I'm going to see this, mm-hmm. see about this. Right here. Yolanda, I was thinking about you when I was in, in Kiev, Ukraine. We have mobile coffee services and they, some of them are pretty good like everywhere. Well, we have, because there is so many, it's such a big town, but there is coffee and tea, all, all mm-hmm. kinds like there's mobile things everywhere because a lot of people are you know walking and it's it's i think it's one of the best businesses out there probably i i i can't judge for us because it's hard for me to say it depends where you live i guess all right i think this is the power of um where you can kind of feel like i always say i'm this crazy researcher i think this is where the power of researching because really people the answers are always out there but a lot of times people won't dig deep to even get to those answers mm-hmm. so the person that does can kind of seem like the next expert yeah, yeah. Just I don't see how you know I could speak with any authority. So Do you really have to though? Just well, you can, as long as you know more than the audience, you can always speak with with authority. Well, and there's expert articles out there, you know. And a lot of times, all you have to do is just rewrite those articles, or the, all the blogger has to do is rewrite those articles. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. This is kind of there, awesome. There is a... Um, yeah, it's an interesting concept. Mm-hmm. I forget what program it One is. That I've never considered before. Oh, Chuck, I give relationship advice, you know. <laughs> well, yeah, you got a point there. <laughs> exactly. Uh, <laughs> that, you know, not to be funny or anything. That is, it's true. been right here under uh, my nose the whole time. <laughs> I didn't even That's see That's a perfect it. example, though. Listen, Veronica is single and she's giving relationship advice. And it's going great. For, She's perceived single. Let me say it that way, because I don't know. And yeah. she's giving relationship advice. Mm-hmm. That proves it yes, right there. I know. And you know, you know, guys, when we all think about stuff that we've said, oh, I want to start this business. Oh, that'd be a great business idea. Oh, that's yeah. that's gonna work for as a business. When we do that, he's giving us a way to take it further. Yeah. <clears throat> when really, probably somebody like you or you or Chuck. And Pat and CJ should be giving re- relationship advice. Yeah. Yeah. H- how's that been going? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's interesting. Because, you know, there's too busy. There's a software out there. I forget what it is. Well, you can find out what blogs did the best in a certain industry that you're going after. Like which ones that like yeah. resonate yeah. the most. Mm-hmm. And all you got to do is, is rewrite those articles. Mm-hmm. But you, you know, guys, go on a blog. I just want to say seriously, I had so much doubt starting this because I, I, I felt for a moment, I felt uh, like hypocritical. I'm not married at this moment, you know, mm-hmm. but I felt on the other hand, I felt, okay, but I've learned something. I had experiences. I know that particular specific that I want to help people with because I've learned it the hard way. And I also observed other people's events with the same thing so I can relate to my background uh, and uh, how it goes in a marriage, let's say. And so, and I realized, no, I can, but it was, it, it was hard for me for a moment. I thought, you know, I'm going to be like a total fraud, you know, mm. but then I realized that I have so much knowledge and so much insight and you know what, it's working out. It's, this thing has been growing like crazy. Mm-hmm. And people don't know what can go wrong. What? You definitely know what can go wrong. Exactly. And I know also that going wrong, they created a very strong desire and understanding of the right path. And, you know, my, my men really appreciate my advice. And I get so much feedback now that I, I understand I'm going the right route. But at first, it's, it was kind of weird. Mm. But in a way, you are teaching people something. You are teaching people how to live. Because some people kind of die. You're also in, in taking a different point of view. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ideally, you're they're they're doing this is you can kind of look at this as a reverse engineering of this exact methodology that we're looking at because they're asking you the questions mm-hmm. of their ideal of what their ideal. I mean, let's just call it the the end goal. You yeah. know, I mean, they're not the customer. Their yeah. goal is to get a spouse. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you get a mate, get a woman. So they're asking you the questions. Yeah, mm-hmm. yes. You know what I mean, so it's kind of really the same principle. I have now all the confidence doing it, and I absolutely love it. But yes, so you can look at it from the other perspective. Yes. Mm. Well, we got a couple minutes left. Who who had the panda planner? 
I do. Okay, because I, I, I end up getting one. What do you put in the uh, the affirmation and the focus boxes? So your focus for every day is whatever you want to focus on. You, it can be mentally or an actual action item. And then affirmation is whatever you want to affirm about yourself that day. Okay. Yeah. You so let's say you wake up, out for example. Say it again. You do those in the morning or in the end? I do it the night before. Gotcha. Um, Monday, I had a really bad day, a really bad Monday. So I had to um, prepare my Tuesday, Monday night, and made sure that when I affirmed myself on Tuesday, for Tuesday, that what I really wanted to focus on it was not allowing other people to distract me. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. I, uh, I don't. I try not to log into well, really, I try not to log into the front side of Facebook very often anymore. I go into the back end, the business side of it, but I, I really do try to stay off of Facebook as absolutely as much as possible these days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you don't have me. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. What's your name? I'm not going to talk about it. <clears throat> Why? No. So, yeah. So you're gonna say, more, I just want you guys to know, regarding social media, you have more power than you think. And if you don't feel like you have the power, because if I don't want to read something, or if there's somebody I know that's going to piss me off, I'm going to scroll past it. You no, have the power of your time if you're on your phone. I mean, I can follow and unfriend and do that. I mean, my, my timeline right. is just stream, but I just, it's, I still find that it's it's more of an ADHD thing. It is, yeah. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? And oh, that's, yeah. That's more so what it is. I just, I noticed, I, I'm trying to increase my productivity, and I can do that. I can do everything I need to do on the business side, on the business side of Facebook, as far <clears> as, like, the companies and stuff like that. So I try to, I just try to limit my time, so to speak. I'm trying to, I'm trying to adult <clears> myself here. Mm-hmm. So, And I just want to say real quick. Th- about you, Abdul. Mm-hmm. I'm going to call you out for a second. Is mm-hmm. that you may ask a question on Facebook and mm-hmm. people answer or they ask you a question, you never go back to it. Nope. So now I will never answer another one of your questions again because you don't care about my response enough. So it's, it doesn't mean anything to you. So now I won't be answering it. I'm not saying me personally. I'm saying that's the that's what you're putting out there. So you'll say, um, for example, whatever your question may be. I don't care what it is. Mm-hmm. And and someone have questions to, back to you or they say they do a response and you ignore it or you don't say anything back about it, then you've lost those followers, so to speak, because yeah. you're not interacting. Yeah, you're not engaging. Um, not you that you probably something. didn't even put that question out there because of you wanted to know what other people think, but that's the norm, 96% of the time anyway. Mm-hmm. And so now that you're, you're putting the question out there, the minimum you should do is go back and either touch them, respond, or anything, even if it's just one person. Those people... Um, they unfollow you, they stop following you or whatever, and you might be losing some of your audience that way. And it actually, it actually, flat, sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, sorry. It actually okay. flatlines your, your goal, too. Because if mm-hmm. your goal is to get in front of as many people as possible to get answers, to get a variety, by you, that's just the way the algorithm works. So I noticed when you go back and actually you comment, you like people's comments, and you interact with that, with that it makes that post trend more and more people actually get to see right. it. So. I noticed that yesterday for the first time, and I, well, because I'm learning the back end of Facebook, mm-hmm. yesterday I went, we posted our breakfast post after the 5 a.m. book club we were having. You guys didn't know CJ and I were sitting having breakfast, mm-hmm. but um, in the middle of the day, I went back and added smiley face, and it started all over again. I edited the post, mm-hmm. and then yes. I added smiley faces, and it started to post all over again. I was like, whoa. Yeah. All you got to do sometimes is go back and like a person coming or something. Yeah. It'll, it'll, it'll reboot it up. <clears throat> yep. Which is why a lot of people, I, I, I put a post one day, <laughs> something about like a, every time you like your own post, a kitten dies. Something like that, because it just. I saw you put that. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It, no, I don't know. It, people, you know, David Huffman. He came back. He's like, you know, when you do that, it actually spurs the engagement, which I can get that. But there's just some type of social. Um, I don't know. It just doesn't. Well, make if sense. you don't like your own post, 
why anybody else would like. I was the same way. I, I felt it weird, but now I put hearts in my own post because if I don't like my own post, why other people... Uh, Right, but that's like I asking my like mom. If, oh, that's no. like asking my mom if I'm handsome. Sean. Of course she's <laughs> right. I'm with you. I'm with so you, Sean. I have a marketing weird thing, like while I remember. So you know, we talk mm. about my situation. I put myself on the spot with the relationship advice. So Bill and Sylvia, I give relationship advice. But here is person reaching out to me and says, "You, you, t you like, yeah, like you give us relationship advice, and have you ever dated a Ukrainian woman?" <laughs> So they tell me you have like no business give us a relationship because you're not dated Ukrainian woman. So I said, <laughs> so and he said like you you didn't live there enough. Well, that kind of gives me a compliment because I did say that I've been here for two for ten years. But he said you mm -hmm. lived there for very long for a very short time, so you don't know. And like, so and now you, you tell us how people are always there. But you, you know, you've never dated a Ukrainian woman. <laughs> yeah. So, so that tells you that you need to do what you need to do and and go with your message and learn mm -hmm. the business or learn the inside. It's, because if people think how people will disqualify us, they, they will always do something. I had to agree with him. I never dated a Ukrainian woman. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This this is going deep, and it, it just lets you know what it's all about. It's about giving people exactly what they want by asking those questions. <laughs> yeah. Or I have to say that that's to it's them. about getting out your own way. Just get get the hell out your own way. Mm. It's, about, it's about other people. Get out your way. Create mm -hmm. what they don't also but my favorite is create what they don't know they need. Like this is a kind of like I can feel that they, like create what they don't know what they need mm -hmm. but you see that it might be needed but they don't know yet so don't ask them for an opinion necessarily but if you see that that service is needed you can still create it even yep. though you never dated a ukrainian woman in your life um so who wants to take the next chapter I'm not available uh, to do it till Friday, so I can't. I have okay, you, Friday, whatever. Friday. You have Friday. Anybody tomorrow? How about you, Veronica? Okay, is it chapter three? Uh, chapter four, actually. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Okay. My crisis. Chapter four. Okay. Okay, I'll do it if nobody else got the <laughs> What? Didn't we start? Didn't we start chapter one on Tuesday? Mm-hmm. Well, I did two and three today. Yeah. They were both like three pages long. Oh, mm -hmm. got it. Sean, it's nice to have you back, man. Well, you have so much confidence when you talk about these things. I feel like taking all my copy books and like yes, yes, and just <laughs> right. Yeah, he he shot he shines in the um yeah I say the, the nerd areas. Yeah, which you is have this authority. The most, yes, I agree. You have this authority persona that like, hey, this is how it is, and this, like it's just really, it's just really awesome. I am a nerd. Yeah. We like proud nerds of it. in our club. I'm a nerd and proud of it. Yeah. I'm, I'm with I like you. We like nerds like in the book club. Sean. See, the, see the feedback right. here. That's a that's a that's a life size stormtrooper. <laughs> <a nerd>. yeah. <laughs> I we like need... you more knowing you're vegan. I'm trying. I'm not giving up cheese for nobody. <laughs> Let's not give that nerd it. stuff. I love cheese. I'm not giving it up. But um, no. yeah, I'm with you in the nerd thing. Uh, Where did you get the stormtrooper from? Uh, it's actually from Nissan. When uh, the Rogues, they had the Star Wars Rogue. <clears throat> I started a limited edition uh, version of Rogue, and I got I got them from the dealership. I know Nissan. someone who would absolutely love that. I have some uh, limited edition. Um, because they put out some keychains, some death head keychains, like the the mask, and I got some limited edition ones. I I'll, I'll feel free to go send you one if you want one. Oh my God, would you? Yeah, you can't you can't really say. Hey man, they're, and oh the, my the God. cool thing about them is, is because they're limited edition, and then they're like the uh, I, I I guess it's matte mate the the flat. Mm -hmm. paint, yeah, that, yeah. There's actually a limited limited in there that when you open it, it's like one in every ten thousand that they're actually shining. So you might get. You know, you might get something. Wow, that'd be awesome. But um, I'm reading with a chicken drum tomorrow. <laughs> do what? <laughs> I'm reading with a chicken drum tomorrow. Vegan with a chicken drum. All right. I feel Shut a lot up. better. I feel a lot better, Rev, since I went vegan. 
Yeah. Try to be an ish, I guess. You should say. you should show your uh, put it in a book club chunk of your commercial that you did at Nissan where you guys were acting out the whole Star Wars theme. Yeah. yeah. That would be good. Oh, that, that would be awesome. Yeah, I, I wrote that and everything and I uh, I work for a particularly uh That's exciting. My boss is something else, I'll tell you that. They didn't mm -hmm. even I, I had to make them go back and edit and put my name in the credits on that. And I wrote and did everything on that. And all of a sudden, my boss is the executive producer, and he didn't even want to do that Hey, who cares? It doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah he's the guy oh, that no. your ideas are all of a sudden his when they're great. Oh, yeah, it's known for it. And that's what I'm saying. I hate to say this. Like, I do like my boss because he took very good care of me. But I've got, like, a couple different opportunity offers and stuff like that. And I've been around. And, 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 and four times in three weeks, I've had people say the exact same phrase that Todd doesn't like an idea unless it's his idea. That's all right. Yeah. I'm going to be listening to this, and he'll be hearing you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's an <laughs> Illuminati. He's straight Illuminati. He can hear me right now. Yolanda <laughs> can tell you about that. The, the moment of truth, Father in Book Club. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I hate that. It's okay, though. It, it's the truth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. Well, guys. Have a great day. Have a great day. I'll, I'll get up some chicken and a watermelon tomorrow. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. <laughs> You're oh, evil. Oh, my gosh. You're evil. <laughs>